Oh, come on, Dad, the battery's running out. Yeah, but the timer doesn't say that it's the right time. We're just going to have to wait. We're going to be waiting a long time. Can we not just get on with it? Well, I suppose when you're in charge of the timer, then you can. Hello, and welcome to Mr. Buckridge's collective worship during uh, COVID-19. It's good to see you all again, and I look forward to sharing with you our thoughts this week. Do you get impatient waiting sometimes? I know I do. Is there anything during this time of the virus that you've got frustrated at having to wait to do? You know, as the weather has got warmer and better, there's something that me and Daniel have definitely been impatient to do. Here he comes. He can hardly wait to get out on the cricket field again. And thankfully, this week, we finally got permission to be able to go to the park, get a bat and a ball out, and start playing cricket at the park once again. But you know, I wonder how you use the waiting time. The time when you can't get out and do what you want to do. You see, Daniel and I have been preparing to get out on the cricket field. Here's one of the things that we've been doing. Out in the garden, we've been making sure that our catching is up to scratch to make sure that when we get out on the cricket field again, we can catch it all and we don't drop it just like that. Okay. And there's something else that Daniel has been doing as well. Did you see that cricket bat that he was holding? Well, that's a new cricket bat from Christmas this year. Now, before you start to use a cricket bat, there's something that you should do for quite a long time. Here we see Daniel hard at work banging in his cricket bat. Okay, Daniel, thanks. You can do that at home where it's not going to disturb the video. But, Daniel, why is it important to bang your bat in? Well, if I didn't bang my cricket bat in enough, I would, when hitting the cricket ball properly, I would get cracks in it like this. Okay, so Daniel's just going to show you when we did start to use this, he obviously hadn't done the hitting in, the knocking in quite enough. And here's a bat that was his previous bat, and you can see he definitely didn't do it enough last time. I wonder whether he'd have learned the lesson for this time. Do you think he's going to bang his bat in a bit more before we use it again? We'll have to wait and see. But the point is this. When we're waiting and we can't get on, there's always the opportunity to prepare and to practice for when we can go out and do things. We're going to think about the time that is important in the Christian calendar, a time called Pentecost. You see, the disciples of Jesus had had a really, really interesting and exciting 40 or so days. After the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus had been with them on and off for those 40 days, and he had been teaching them and showing them so many things. But now, he had taken them out to a place called the Mount of Olives. And as he was there, he was saying some final last words to them. And one of them was this. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's a bit of a strange word, isn't it? Gospel. It simply means good news. Later on, one of Jesus' followers would say this. This is the gospel, the good news that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again, and he was seen. You see, Jesus was giving these disciples a mission, a job to do, to go into all the world, to tell the world that God so loved the world. 
that he gave his only begotten son. Do you remember that from last week? You see, the story of Jesus is for everyone. But Jesus knew these disciples wouldn't be able to do it on their own. And so he made them a promise. And the promise was this, that they would receive some power to help them. But he didn't say when. He just told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait. Oh, waiting. But how long do we have to wait for? Is it going to be days, months, years? They were just told that they had to wait. Well, Jesus raised his hand in blessing upon his disciples. And then, to their amazement, they saw Jesus ascending up into the sky and then into the clouds until finally he disappeared from their sight. You can just imagine the disciples there pointing up in amazement and then just standing there like this. Well, while they were standing there like that, two angels appeared to them and spoke to them and said, why are you standing here just looking up into the sky? Jesus is gone. But one day he will come back in the same way. But now, Jesus told you to do something. Can you remember what they were to do? That's right. To go back to Jerusalem and wait. To wait for what? I wonder whether you can remember that. Shall we see whether Daniel's awake and listening? Daniel, what were they to wait for? Power from the Holy Spirit to wait for power to help them on their mission to go into all the world. Well, away went the disciples back to Jerusalem to wait. Now I wonder, how were they going to use their waiting time? Because you see, when we've got waiting time, we can use it well or we can waste it. I wonder, how do you use your waiting time? Well, these disciples, they knew they were going to have to wait, but they didn't know how long for. And so, there were some things that they could do. And the most important one was this. They spent time praying together. And there was a whole group of them that over this time of waiting, they spent time together praying, asking God to give them help when the right time came. But there was something else that they needed to do as well. I wonder, can you remember how many disciples Jesus had? That's right. He had 12. But do you remember that one of them became a traitor? One of them betrayed Jesus. And so now there was only 11. Well, one day Peter said to the rest of the disciples, we need to choose someone to take the place of Judas Iscariot. And we need someone who has been with us all the time since Jesus started teaching and preaching. All the time, right until his resurrection and saw him then. Well, they chose two people. And then, from one of those, they chose the one that was going to stay with them and be part of the twelve. Well, they waited, and they waited, and they waited. One day, two days, three days, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then finally, one day, while they were together praying, 
on the 50th day after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, something amazing happened. Into the room came a rushing wind, or the sound of a rushing wind. And then, all of a sudden, they noticed above each other things that looked like tongues of fire. They were amazed at what was happening, but they could also feel themselves filling with power and courage and bravery. And all of a sudden, they really wanted to get out and to start telling people all about the Lord Jesus Christ. But there was something else that happened at that time as well. If you had been listening in, you might have started to suddenly hear words you didn't quite understand. Maybe like this. Cardio account M. Le or like this. Did you understand that? Well, I knew what Daniel was saying, but only because I told him what to say. If I hadn't told him what to say, I wouldn't have understood that. Daniel, what on earth were you speaking in? Well, the first one was for God so loved the world in French, and the second one was for God so loved the world in Spanish. Wow different languages. And here were the disciples now speaking in languages that they had never learned. They knew that this was the promise of power that had come. And God was telling them now it was time to start going out on the mission that he had given. He had given them the power. Now it was time for them to go out and preach. And so news had gotten around very, very quickly in Jerusalem that something strange was happening. Now, this time was a time of a special feast for the Jewish people. And so people had come from all kinds of different places, all kinds of different languages. And as these people came close to where the disciples were, they began to hear their own languages being spoken. And they were saying, what is going on? We don't understand. Well, the disciples came out and Peter took the lead. Do you remember Peter? How during our Easter stories we thought about how he denied Jesus? Well now, here is Peter completely changed. He is full of courage and boldness because he's received power just like Jesus promised. And Peter said, do you remember about the Lord Jesus who walked around Israel? Do you remember how he did so many good things. How that he healed the lame. And do you remember the blind man? And as Jesus walked by him, he healed the blind man so that he could see and didn't have to beg. Do you remember the great teaching that he did? This was a man that God showed he was pleased with by all the mighty things that he did. But that man who God approved, you took and you crucified him. Maybe some of you in the crowd, you shouted, away with him, crucify him. We don't want this man to reign over us. Well, this man you crucified and he was put into a tomb. But Peter said, but today we're here to tell you that he didn't stay in the tomb. He's not in the tomb anymore because we have seen him. He rose again from the dead and many of us have seen him. 
and we just saw him ten days ago, go back to be with his Father in heaven. You see, this Jesus who you crucified, this Jesus who you treated as nothing, God has shown by raising him from the dead and taking him to heaven, God has shown that he is the Lord and he is the Saviour. Well, as Peter came to finish his message about Jesus to the crowd, many of the crowd suddenly realised that they had been wrong. To shout, crucify him, crucify him, they suddenly realised that Jesus was the Saviour. And they said to Peter, what must we do? And Peter said, you must repent. You must be sorry for the wrong things you've done. And you must put your trust, your faith in the Lord Jesus as the Saviour. And then be baptised to show that you now belong to him. Well, on this day of Pentecost, 3,000 people believed that Jesus was the Saviour and they put their trust in him and they joined with the disciples. So now it wasn't just a small group, it was a bigger group who were going to work in partnership together. You see, do you remember that Jesus had given them a mission to do, a job to do? Can you remember what it was? Should we see whether Daniel can? Daniel, what was the mission? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. The good news about Jesus Christ. And Jesus knew that they would need at least two things to help them. Number one, they needed what, Daniel? Power. And number two, they would need partnership. They would need help. They would need joining together. They would need a community that could grow and grow and grow. Do you know what we call that partnership? That community? We call that the church. You see, the church is not a building. The church is the followers of the Lord Jesus. And ever since Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the church has been growing and growing and growing and fulfilling the mission that Jesus gave them to go into all the world and preach the good news about Jesus. How our sins can be forgiven and we can have a relationship, a friendship with God once again. But what did they need? Let's see if Daniel can remember one last time. Daniel, what were the two things they needed? Number one, power. And number two, partnership. The disciples had to wait for those things to start. But they used their time wisely to prepare so that when God gave the go-ahead and sent the Holy Spirit, they were ready to spring into action and to do what he had asked them. Maybe you're feeling frustrated at this time. But maybe this is just a time of waiting. And you need to ask yourself, how am I going to use this time of waiting so that I'm ready for the future? And while you're waiting, perhaps you can be thinking about the message that the disciples went out to give, all about the Lord Jesus. And ask yourself, what do I really think about him? Now we're going to sing a song, and if you know the words, join in and sing along.
to the town The sun still shines on It never goes down The light of the world is risen again The people of darkness are near Let's have a short word of prayer. Dear God, we give thanks for the example of the disciples who used their waiting time wisely so that they were ready to spring into action when the right time came. We pray that you'd help us to use waiting time wisely too. And we pray that as we've heard about the good news message that the disciples started to uh, talk about in Jerusalem and has now spread about the whole world, we pray that you'd help us to consider it, to reflect upon it, and see how it might affect our lives too. Bless each one, keep us safe, we pray. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's been good to be with you and to think about the story of Pentecost. Now, Pentecost actually happens later on in May, uh, but you'll be on holiday at that time, uh, so we decided to do it a little bit earlier. So there won't be... Uh, a video next week because you'll be on half term holiday but I look forward to next time that I can do one of the one of these uh, for you once again but from now from Abigail on the camera from Daniel and from myself goodbye and have a really great week